Today around 11 a.m. Eastern, I ended up taking a trade on RTY, which netted me over 20 grand. So I'm gonna walk you guys through the exact trade, why I took the trade, where my risk and reward was, how many contracts I took, how much money it took, all of those good details will be in today's video. And I do wanna highlight, if you have any questions in regards to things that I'm covering in today's video, like maybe how to trade features with a small account, how to use a trade copier, prop firms, anything like that, I do have a free futures workshop that's linked in the description box down below that goes over all of those details. So after this video, I highly recommend you go check that out. And with that being said, let's dive right in. And just to show you guys an example of kind of what I posted, so we can go to Discord, go to Trade Alerts, and then you can see my little drawings, or you might not be able to, it might be too small. Um, but you can see I was looking to just show everyone in Discord, which is how I do my trade alerts, is I draw on my charts what I would like for price action to do in order for me to enter that trade. I'm looking for a target of 2012.50 or more. So let's see if we can get there. Now, obviously I'm shooting for higher than 2012.50, but that's just my first area of interest if we push higher, because I just assess at each resistance level. So if we start to stall out there, I'm obviously not gonna let my profits go. I'm gonna move my stop up with my play. And I just wanna point out that I do have eight contracts. So you're gonna see these numbers be probably larger than you're used to. I don't know, it just depends on what you trade, but you can see this one five minute candle had me up 385, then down for something. Now I'm back up to 65 to 400 range, just depending on where this candle lands. So lots of volatility today, but I'm also trading a higher contract range. Eight is definitely over my usual. I just was really confident on this setup and I have not taken very many trades at all today, just due to news. So I was willing to go a little bit heavier on this setup. Okay, so typically I would go ahead and move my stop up now that we have started to gain some momentum, not too close to suffocate it. However, again, if we start to retrace and come back underneath this candle, I'll just go ahead and close out my position. Just a reminder, I wanted to keep my stops a little bit looser, my actual hardcore stops, just because I know we're gonna see a lot of wick action today. This candle is a great example. This candle is a great example. This is looking much better. So now I'm up about $1,000 on each account, again, trading 10 different accounts. So the cool thing about a trade copier is a lot of people get this mixed up. It's not you're copying somebody's trades. It's just you have multiple accounts and I can trade all of them with one click. Okay, I've got my stop moved up to protect profits here just because we are seeing some momentum to the upside. I don't wanna give back too much. So now I'm not risking anything and I'm definitely only going to be able to make money if my stop hits. I'm up about 1500 per account as we close in on my first target of 2012.50. That's what I'm talking about. I just have to pay attention to price action. This candle is huge. So I'm probably gonna end up selling into this candle. I'm just gonna watch and see how I feel here. Just reminding everybody to protect their profits. This candle is really important. We need to push up into 2012.50 and then I need to see how we react there to decide if I'm gonna sell or not. I'm closing in on almost 2000 profits per account, so I'm definitely not gonna let this go. I'm most likely gonna end up taking profits soon, just FYI, because again, 2,000 per account is an insane day, especially for only coming into trade for about 20 minutes now. Okay, order I just, filled. you heard order filled, I'm assuming, um, but I just went ahead and closed out my trade there. Okay, I had to update the group. That was just, again, too quick not to take. So let me explain what I mean here. Okay, so I needed a lunch break. I decided to just come back and do a more in-depth recap for you guys after I ate something. So I made a little bit more sense. I was getting hangry. We're gonna start from the very beginning because I know during live trades, I can be going really fast and it can be hard to keep up. So we're just gonna backtrack and then I'll walk you guys from finish to end kind of where my head was with that trade. Risk versus reward and also how that changed. I wanna touch on that a little bit because obviously I exited before my brackets hit, which is not uncommon for me, but I was oversized in that trade, meaning I just was taking on more size than I usually had, which meant that I needed to have tighter parameters in regards to where I was taking profits, if I was gonna let those profits come back down any. I just didn't have as much wiggle room because I had so much size. So let's dive into the beginning of this trade and why I was looking to take it in the first place. Okay, so again, RTY futures trade here. If you wanna type it in your chart to follow along, just making sure you are doing the slash symbol for futures. So this trade started to develop around 1040, 1045. This is when I was coming in to look for trades. And so that's gonna be right in here. Now, as you can see, we have progressed quite well over the day. So if I would have held onto a runner, I would be getting really close 
close to my 2022 original price target. However, we're going to touch on why I just decided to exit a little bit later. You guys have already kind of caught some drift of that, but we will cover it. So anyways, it's something I do need to work on. I'm not perfect. Leaving a runner is my biggest flaw. I fail to do that every single time. Right here, you can see I have a key level near 2,180. So we hit this area, bounced up. So there is some demand there. We came back down, wicked off, wicked off. Demand there. Once again, we came down for a last time, took some liquidity here because we dipped below these previous two areas here. So took out some stops, but I had a range in mind, right? So I'm not sure if I completely mentioned this. So we will, like I said, start from the beginning. Why was I looking to go long? Well, micro range, which is 50 to 61.8% range here. And also I just did a short video on how you can use the Fibonacci retracement tool to create micro range. So you should go check that out. But micro range, we were in it from a larger point of view, which means I need to start looking for potential reversal trades as long as we are holding support and higher lows in it. So the bottom of that range was around 1998.60. The top of that range was 2012.50. So as long as we were holding over that 1998.60 level from a larger point of view, I was still interested in playing dips, playing long trades when I see us start to reverse. So that was the first key puzzle piece here. And you can see, yes, we dipped down below 2180. This was just another key level that I wanted us to see higher support over to signify strength. And so if buyers were stepping in here, I was more confident. I didn't want us to go too close to that bottom line here, but again, overall perspective stays the same. As long as we're over this level, I am still long biased. So I actually want to touch on some things that I should have done differently. And that was not sizing so heavy on the trend break because I had all of my size right in here. And you guys saw that with my average price was right in here. I wish that I would have scaled in differently, but again, I was pretty dang confident on this trade. I was seeing what I needed to. It was definitely an A plus trade based off of what I look for. So therefore I just waited for quote unquote the safer entry, but that meant I had to have a tighter stop. So we'll talk about why my actual stop was not way down here where you saw it on the brackets. My mental stop, like I mentioned, was near that 2002 to 2003 mark, which eventually got moved up. But once again, reason for entry is we were in micro range and we started to form some support here near a key level of 2180. We also started to break a key trend line that I had drawn and there were just everything working in my favor to go long based off of my trading plan. So the fact that I did size in so heavy when I did meant that I didn't have as much wiggle room as I would like to have. But you just adjust, right? So if you're going in heavier with size, you can't allow your position to breathe too much. If you do, it could cost you way too much. You could get stopped out. If you're using prop firms, you could hit your trailing threshold. So with this position right here, the reason that I scaled in as heavy as I did when I did is because of these three candles right here were giving me confidence each time we attempted to back test this trend break, we would wick up wick up. So I was seeing buyers come in and that was making me confident to just go ahead and fully size in. But this did mean, as I mentioned when I was live trading, or I hope I did, that if these candles started to lose their power, meaning their lows were no longer being held, and we started to do something like this and take out those lows and then go back and back test, I would have needed to really, really manage my risk very heavy then because we're getting too close to my risk versus reward of what I took 2012-50 being out of whack. And in order for this trade to have worked, I really, really needed what happened to happen, right? This 2004 level was really where my head was. But again, I had a mental stop there. So if we started to break and then come below, I most likely wouldn't have been fully out of that position until around 2003 to potentially 2002, you know, it's hard to predict how you're gonna react. It's just in the moment kind of things. But I did mention that I did not have my hard stop there, at least not yet until we gained momentum because this has been a very volatile day. We've had news all morning. The markets have been insane. It is very common to see massive wick candles like we were seeing here. And therefore I wanted to let it breathe just from a manual stop point of view, but mental stop was definitely higher than that. So again, risking right in this area, 
if we came back to back test this trend break, I wanted to be able to stay in my position, but ultimately I wanted this trend break candle range here to hold and we did. So made me confident to continue holding. And then we finally saw that momentum push up that I was looking for. So that brings me to my next point of moving your stop loss up when you start to see momentum go in your favor. So this is where a lot of traders struggle, including myself. It's just an art form, right? You don't want to move your stop loss too quick because then you're going to suffocate your play and get stopped out, which isn't the end of the world. You know, if you're trading futures, if there's no PDT rule, you can always jump back in. But that's not ideal because commissions add up. So what I usually do is I wait for a momentum candle. So this is definitely a momentum candle. But you can also see that there's a really tight range here where I could have just gone ahead and moved up my stop right underneath this area near 2004. Um, and on a typical day that wasn't as crazy as today, I would have done that. But again, I didn't want to suffocate it. So once we saw this candle, I definitely went ahead and moved up my stop because you don't want to let your profits go, right? Especially when you're starting to see momentum in your favor. Now, I am more of a scalper, you know, fast paced day trader. I don't stay in for very long, especially with size like that. When I have that amount of size, so typical contract size for me on average is anywhere between three to five. If I go five to eight, my confidence is high. And I also most likely haven't taken that many trades that day. So that's going to be my one golden ticket trade. But since I had, you know, heavy size, I needed to exit once I saw the reaction that we did see with 2012.50. So this reaction to that level just was not making me confident. So obviously I sold into that move. Now you can see we chopped around. And again, if I didn't have the size that I did, I most likely would have held for my larger target, which if you guys remember was towards that 2022 mark, which we've got pretty dang close now. And we are nearing 2.30 PM Eastern. So this was more of an all day trade kind of thing, which the perks about futures, just going off topic a little bit, you guys will learn this in the futures workshop, is they don't have Greeks or Theta. So you can let the play play out in your favor. But one thing I will caution you on is you might want to do that with micros instead of minis. So it'll give you more flexibility and you're not going to have to worry too much about big fluctuations in your P&L. You guys saw how much mine was moving very quickly because I was so heavy in contracts. If I had eight micros, this would have been much more maintainable and I could have let it breathe more. So my point with these recaps is to not say, oh, look at me, I made so much money. It's really to help educate you guys on what I was looking for, but also show you how I could have done better. I am not perfect. I honestly don't think anybody is, right? There's always ways we can improve. And so one of the things, again, that I could have done better is not sizing so heavy because it just kind of made me feel like I really needed to exit that trade, especially when I saw the profits that I did. That is a really insane day, right? $20,000 in a day is nothing to tread lightly about. And I'm very aware of that. So I think seeing that number just kind of spooked me and made me go ahead and take my profits at take profit one. I gave you guys as much detail as I possibly can on on why I entered this trade, why I stopped out of this trade, how I could have done better, what I was looking for. You know, people knock trend lines all the time, but I think where they're going wrong is they're not using trend lines with other things, right? So you'll never hear me say, or rarely ever hear me say that I'm just taking a trade because of a trend line break. It is most always due to us being in an area of interest for me, whether that's a key level, a supply and demand zone, something that's going to have a higher probability of seeing buyers or sellers in that area is absolutely key for me to enter that trade or consider a trade. And then I can look for something like a trend break or price action or candle development in order for me to actually execute on it. So don't just think this was completely a trend break trade. There were other factors I've mentioned like fib and micro range, this key level of 2180, candle reactions, the way the candles were forming, level two data. There's so much that goes into reading the actual chart and it's hard to obviously articulate all of that. It's something you can learn definitely by getting more screen time over time. I've been doing this for eight years. So obviously I've had plenty of time to watch the screens, but I do hope this gave you some insight on my thought process and I hope it was helpful. If it was, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. And also don't forget if you're interested in futures trading, you want to learn more on how you can do this with a small account because 
This amount of money was made using prop firms and prop firms are people who will provide you capital to trade with. So I was using actually very little of my own money to make what I did today. And that's because again, prop firms will pay for your trading basically. It's a simple way to put it if you can pass their evaluations. So that's a whole different ball game. You definitely need strategy, risk versus reward. You've got to be a good trader in order to get funded. They're not going to just fund, you know, some random person who's just throwing darts and hope it sticks. And yeah, that's a wrap for today. I want to stop rambling. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time.